Good morning, kindergartners. I hope you're having such a wonderful morning this morning. Today, I'm going to be reading you a story, and I'm really excited about this story because it is called a fantasy. And do any of you all know what a fantasy is? If you said it's something that does not happen in real life, you are correct. Something that does not happen in real life is a fantasy. So think about it. Let's think about it. What is something that could not happen in real life? Let your imagination go. You can think of anything that would not happen in real life. So like talking animals that talk to you in human voices, that's something that's a fantasy and that does not happen in real life. Or um, if you if a person can fly, usually that can't happen in real life. Like if I could just take off and fly into the sky, that probably wouldn't happen in real life. So that's a fantasy. So this story is a fantasy. So some of the stuff that we're going to talk about can probably not happen in real life. So this is called Dear Mr. Blueberry. And it is by Simon James. And if he is the author, what does that mean he did? If you said write the words, that's exactly right. Okay, and what does this cover kind of look like? Have any of you all ever received a letter before? It has a stamp in the corner, and that's kind of what that looks like. And so a lot of these, this is going to be kind of interesting. It's a different type of story than we've read before because it's in letter form. Dear Mr. Blueberry. <clears throat> so here's our very first letter. So we're going to learn some things from our letters. Here we go. So, dear Mr. Blueberry, I love whales very much, and I think I saw one in my pond. How could that happen in real life? So that's our first clue that this is a fantasy. Please send me some more information on whales, as I think he might be hurt. Love, Emily. So what does Emily want? She's writing to Mr. Blueberry. And what does she want? She wants some more information on whales because she says there's one in her pond. Can you believe it? Oh my goodness, isn't that crazy? So Mr. Blueberry, we think is, his, is her teacher because she's asking for more information. So she's writing her teacher and says, I need some more information on whales because I have one in my pond. Oh my goodness, that's so crazy. Now he's writing back. Dear Emily, here are some details about whales. I don't think you'll find it was a whale you saw because whales don't live in ponds, but they live in salt water. Yours sincerely, your teacher, Mr. Blueberry. So that's how we know she's her teacher. So she's reading her letter. So we learned a lot about Mr. Blueberry. He's a teacher and he says, that's probably not what's in your pond. And then we learn a little bit about Emily too because she's wanting more information about whales. I wonder why she thought it was in her pond. We'll have to keep going. So here's our next letter. Dear Mr. Blueberry, I am now putting salt into my pond every day before breakfast. And last night I saw my whale smile. Why do you think she put salt in her pond? probably to make it salt water. I think he's feeling better. Do you think he might be lost? Love, Emily. Look, and she's putting salt from her salt shaker in the pond. Here we go. Dear Emily, please don't put any more salt into the pond. I'm sure your parents will not be pleased. I'm afraid there can't be a whale in your pond because whales don't get lost. They always seem to know where they are in the ocean. Yours sincerely, Mr. Blueberry. So look, she's reading her letter. So Mr. Blueberry says, please don't put salt in your pond. Why do you think he did that? Is that a good idea? What about the other fish? Do you think that they liked that? Probably not. All right, next letter. Let's see what she's going to say back. Dear Mr. Blueberry, tonight I am very happy because I saw my whale jump and spurt lots of water. He looked blue. Does this mean he's a blue whale? Love, Emily. P.S. What can I feed him with? 
<laughs> Do you think Emily actually saw that whale? Think about it. I don't know. Maybe she made it up. Maybe she thought she saw something else. I'm not sure. Do you think that whale actually lives in a pond in real life? Dear Emily, blue whales are blue and they eat tiny shrimp-like creatures that live in the sea. However, I must tell you that a blue whale is much too big to live in your pond. Sincerely, Mr. Blueberry. Perhaps it's a blue goldfish? So now she's going to be reading about goldfish. So he thinks that it's a goldfish that she sees. Why does he think it's a goldfish and not a whale that lives in her pond? Would a goldfish be a little bit more realistic to live in a pond? I think, I think so too. I think that would be a lot more realistic. I think she might actually have a goldfish. We don't know, but we'll have to find out. So here's our next letter. Dear Mr. Blueberry, last night I read your letter to my whale. Afterward, he let me stroke his head. That means pet. It was very exciting. I secretly took him some crunched up cornflakes and breadcrumbs. This morning I looked in the pond and they were all gone. I think I shall call him Arthur. What do you think? Love, Emily. Oh my goodness. Do you think Emily has a whale in her pond? Why do you think she does not have a whale in her pond? I hope you're thinking about that. Okay, let's see what he's gonna say. Dear Emily, I must point out to you quite forcibly, that means like he's very serious now, that in no way could you actually have a whale in your pond. You might not know that whales are migratory, which means they travel great distances every single day. I am so sorry to disappoint you. Yours sincerely, Mr. Blueberry. She kind of looks a little bit sad, don't you think? So what words did Mr. Blueberry use to tell Emily that there's not a whale in her pond? He said, there's no way, quite forcibly, sorry to disappoint you. He's starting to be serious again. Dear Mr. Blueberry, tonight I'm a little bit sad. Arthur has gone. I think your letter made sense to him and he decided to be migratory again. That means he decided to move on. Love, Emily. Do you think her imagination might have shut him off and said, oh, that's not real? Where do you think Arthur went? Where do whales really live? If you said the ocean, you are correct. Let's see what Mr. Blueberry has to say. Dear Emily, please don't be too sad. It really was impossible for a whale to live in your pond. Perhaps when you're older, you would like to sail the oceans and study and protect the whales. Yours sincerely, Mr. Blueberry. She's sad. I think that would be a good job for her. She obviously really likes, likes whales. Dear Mr. Blueberry, today is the happiest day. I went to the beach and you'll never guess who I saw. Arthur! I called to him and he smiled. I knew it was Arthur because he let me stroke his head. I gave him some of my sandwich. And then we said goodbye. I shouted that I loved him very much and I hope you don't mind. I said that you loved him too. Love Emily and Arthur too. Why do you think that Emily thought that was Arthur? She let him pet him. Do you think she actually saw Arthur at the beach? That's up to you to decide. We don't know. Maybe she did. Maybe she didn't. The end. I love that story. I think that's such a fun, silly story. So um, we have some vocabulary words that I want you to practice. Can you say this word? Information. Information. So information means there's facts about something. So that's our first vocabulary word. Perhaps, can you say that word? Perhaps, that means maybe. So I would say, perhaps we're gonna go to the zoo today. That means maybe we'll go to the zoo today. Okay, another vocabulary word. So we have information, perhaps. Next one is pleased. Can you say that? Pleased means happy or excited. Pond, who knows what a pond is? I hope you know what a pond is. But a pond is like a little bit, bitty, um, like a little little circle of water, like a small body of water. So like a lot of people might have them at their houses or live by them. Um, there's some at like the parks. They're like little. They have like 
fish or maybe, maybe if they're a little bit bigger ponds, they might have ducks or frogs. So it's just a little bit of a spot of water that you can go to. So a whale couldn't live in a pond, but a fish could. So we have information, perhaps pleased, pond. Okay, this is a spurt. Can you say that? Spurt. And that means that that it like uh, that to pour out quickly. So a spurt means it it's like sprays out quickly. So we have spurt, pond, please, perhaps information. And last one is travel. And that means you go somewhere. So you move from one place to another, maybe for a little bit of time, maybe for a long time. Like when you travel to the beach, that means you visit the beach and you go to the beach for a little bit. So our main idea of this story. So let's think about it. What was the what was the main idea? What what did you hear most about of this story? Think about it. So the main idea is that Emily saw a whale and she wanted more information about it from her teacher. So the, they go back and forth and they write letters to each other. Um, and then the details are the things in the letters. So it's like, oh, like she pet him. Oh, he lived in our pond. Oh, he, they went to, she went to the ocean. So those are like the little details. So the main idea is Emily thinks she sees a whale and she wants more information. And the little details are all the things that support that. So they're like, oh, um, he likes salt water. Oh, he likes the ocean. Oh, and all those little things. So those are like little details. So the main idea is that Emily likes whales and she thinks she saw a whale in her pond and named him Arthur and wanted more information from her teacher. All right, so last skill before I get off of here is the letter I. And that is a sight word, the, the big letter I. And that is a long and strong I. And that means it says its name. I, I, I. And, and vowels, the vowels love to say their, their name. So A, E, I, O, U. And sometimes Y. They love to say their names. I, A, E, O, U. They like to say their name. So that means it's a long and strong vowel when it can say its name. But sometimes those little vowels can get squished in words with consonants. So when the vowel is in the middle and the consonants are on either side, they squish it. So it has a little short area there where it stays. And it says it because it's getting squished. So the letter I, when it's long and can stretch out and say its name, it says I. But when it's squished, teeny tiny, it says it, it, it. So I'm going to sing, say a little song for you. And it's, it's called Iggy the Iguana. Iggy has some friends you know. They are itsy bitsy. Find the insect and the inchworm. They are Fritz and Mitzi. All the friends play instruments. Their music will delight you. Now it's time for Iggy's show. Indeed, he will invite you. So this, I don't know if you can see it. That's Iggy the Iguana. And Iggy says, it, it because he is squished and short. But when he's long and strong, like a long eye, he says, I, I, I. So that's what you're that's what we're talking about. Can you think of any words that start with I? I? Igloo, iguana. See if you can find Iggy. See if you can think of any I words. Because this week we're going to be working with I. I hope you came up with a couple. Maybe you could even tell someone in your family or maybe whisper them to one of your stuffed animals. Igloo, ice cream. Thank you. Okay, I'm so glad you did that. So we're gonna have you practice. Um, today you're gonna practice your handwriting. You're gonna work on working your letter I. And the first thing before we do is we learned all about a fantasy today. And a fantasy is a type of story. So we have fiction, we have non-fiction, realistic fiction, and now we have fantasy. So today for your essential question, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be telling me what is does it mean to be a fantasy? And then you're going to be talking about, tell us something that it will not happen in real life. Okay, bye.